Dropping a laptop on a tile floor can cause heavy damage. When my neighbor contacted me and said he had done just that and the USB port was not working, I offered to take a look. Right off I could tell that it was probably a hardware issue. The USB port looked crooked and the adapter itself was stuck. Pulling firmly would not release it. From this angle you can see that it does not sit flush but is slanted. Definitely seems to be something with the hardware. We don't want to rule out that there may be something with the software as well. Only way to find out is to open it up and take a look. Let's go. To open a laptop, you'll need to remove the screws that go along the outside edge. Sometimes the screws can be under the stickers. And that, my friends, is the magnetic speaker. I like to start in a corner and work my way around. This is a Dell P15G, and I've never worked on it before. That's okay, because nearly all laptops come apart the same way. Once I remove the screws, I can pull off the back plate using a simple pry tool or guitar pick. I got this pry tool from an iPhone repair kit, and it works great. The technique that seemed to work the best was to find a groove around the corner and work my way around the outside edge. Most computers will have a slight resistance as you separate the back panel and you will hear a clicking noise as it gives way. As long as you've removed all the screws holding it down, you should be fine. Notice that these long screws on the back still remain, and that's totally normal. And these copper strips are just for heat sinking. Now you can see the motherboard, the fan, HDMI, the speakers, the heatsink, M.2 memory, and the battery. But we're gonna focus on the USB port. The USB adapter still looks very crooked. With the back plate off, I was now able to pull it out, but I did have to pull harder than usual. This was a little confusing. The frame is not bent, so something else is causing it to be resistant. It is very impressive to see how well built this is. A drop to cement or tile floor can break the silicon inside, but it didn't happen here. I plugged and unplugged several more times and still felt the resistance to the USB port. At this point, I decided to see if the mouse would be recognized by the computer. I had to power it up, and luckily it booted right up, so there seems to be no motherboard damage. That is a good looking wallpaper. Stay classy out there. There was a few Windows updates we had to go through, so that's a bummer. Once the updates were complete, I plugged in the mouse and waited to see what would happen. That sound tells us that the computer recognizes something plugged in, but it's not picking up clicks from the mouse. We can deduce that it's probably something with the receiver. Looking at it closely, there's a piece of plastic broken off. Now we need to figure out where that plastic piece is. I then got a look at the USB port and it appears damaged. There are scuff marks along the edge and it looks like the metal connectors are scratched up. All the weld points are intact and there are no cracks on the green silicon motherboard. I started to clean out the USB port and noticed there's a piece of plastic at the bottom of it. When I picked it up and flipped it over, the piece of plastic finally came out. So I think we have it figured out. A piece of plastic broke off from the receiver and was stuck inside the USB port. That is likely what was causing the resistance when plugging in the receiver. Now I know the USB port works, but the mouse doesn't. So it's time to try out a new mouse. This is one of my favorite mice. It's the Microsoft Mobile Mouse 3500. I plugged it in and almost immediately it was recognized. Just to be certain everything was correct, I plugged in a wired mouse, and it too was recognized almost immediately. So with that, it seems that we solved the problem. When the computer fell, it probably landed on that USB receiver, and a piece of it broke off. That piece of plastic was likely blocking the USB adapter from coming out, and also may have caused some damage to the port itself. By cleaning out the port, it removed the broken piece and solved the problem. Unfortunately, the receiver is broken, but a new mouse still works. We didn't have to do any soldering, so that's always a win. I'm glad I could help out my neighbor, and I hope it helped you too. Thanks for watching.